Welcome to Summit Home Healthcare. This is a presentation of the basics of the Medicare Home Health Benefit. Please remove the appropriate tests from your packet. You may work with other participants as needed to complete your tests. There are four requirements for patients to qualify for the Medicare Home Health Benefit. Number one, the care provided must be reasonable and necessary. Number two, the patient must meet the skilled care criteria. Number three, the patient must meet the homebound criteria. And number four, the care provided must meet the part-time and intermittent criteria. Again, all four of these requirements must be met for the patient to qualify for Medicare Home Health Services. An alternate pay source should be identified if a patient only meets one or two of these requirements. We as the Home Health Agency are responsible for providing clear documentation of the patient's progress or lack of progress, medical condition, functional losses or treatment goals to show that services are reasonable and necessary. If there isn't documentation that supports a change in the patient's clinical status, change in treatment plan, or progress toward treatment goals for a three-week time period, it is usually determined that the patient's condition is stabilized and that home health services are no longer indicated. To meet the skilled care criteria, there must be an acute need for skilled nursing, physical therapy, and or speech therapy. The patient must also require at least one of the services mentioned to qualify for the auxiliary services of the medical social worker, home health aid, or non-routine supplies. Once orders have been received for one of the three qualifying services, occupational therapy may be started and can continue independently. Occupational therapy may then serve as a qualifying discipline for auxiliary services. However, these auxiliary services, including medical social worker, home health aid, and non-routine supplies, do not meet the Medicare coverage criteria independently. If these services are still required after the patient no longer meets the skilled care criteria, an alternate pay source should be identified as part of the discharge planning process. The patient must meet the intermittent and part-time requirement. The intermittent requirement applies only to skilled nursing visits. To meet the intermittent criteria, a covered skilled nursing visit is required once every 60 days. An example of this frequency may be the need for a urinary catheter change once per month. At the other end of the range are daily skilled nursing visits, which are defined as any number of visits greater than seven per week. These type of visits must have a defined, finite endpoint that is documented with a physician's order within the first three weeks of starting. The specific date should be identified on the plan of treatment under Form Locator 22. If daily visits are ordered subsequent to initiation of the treatment plan, a telephone order that includes the endpoint date must be written and sent to the physician to be signed. The only exception to the finite endpoint rule is the administration of insulin for a patient who has clear documentation that they are unable to self-administer. The part-time requirement applies a combination of skilled nursing visits and home health aid visits. To meet the part-time criteria, the patient must not require services in excess of 8 hours per day or 28 hours per week. In an exceptional case, care can be extended up to 35 hours per week. The care does not meet the part-time criteria if it exceeds this limit. The last coverage criterion is that the patient must be homebound. 
Medicare defines a patient as homebound when leaving the home requires a considerable and taxing effort, absences from the home for non-medical reasons are of short duration, and home absences do not exceed one time per week. Evaluation of homebound status should be made and documented on each visit. Documentation should be very clear and paint a mental picture of the patient's functional limitations. An example of this documentation would read, patient ambulates with unsteady gait with use of a walker and fatigues after 25 feet of ambulation. Skilled nursing visits include four categories of care. Skilled observation, teaching and training, care plan management and evaluation, and actual hands-on care. If at any time the patient's condition stabilizes, which is defined as a three-week period of time without a clinical or treatment plan change, then skilled nursing visits are no longer appropriate and would not be covered by Medicare. Discharge planning and teaching should be completed in anticipation of any discharge from services. Let's review the four categories of care. Skilled observation is a covered nursing visit when there is an acute change in the patient's clinical condition that requires an assessment by a nurse. For example, in the case of a patient who is diagnosed with an exacerbation of congestive heart failure, a skilled nursing visit may be ordered for an assessment of the patient's cardiopulmonary status and evaluation of the patient's response to a medication change. The next category of covered skilled nursing visits is teaching and training. Teaching a patient to be independent with care and understanding which symptoms to report to their physician is an important element of the care provided during a skilled nursing visit. An example may be a newly diagnosed diabetic patient who needs instructions on insulin administration, diet, foot care, and diabetic education. The third category of skilled nursing care is care plan management and evaluation. This is a covered service when the coordination of care requires the skills of a nurse in order to obtain a favorable outcome. The care must be provided to a very high-risk patient and have a clearly defined goal. Care plan management and evaluation is no longer covered once the care has been stabilized. The last category of skilled nursing care is actual hands-on care. This includes care that must be performed by a skilled nurse within their scope of practice. An example may be an ex a complex dressing change of a complicated wound or tapping an infuser port to irrigate a central line. Physical therapy is the next qualifying service that we'll discuss. The services provided by a physical therapist include establishing a home exercise program that returns patients to their previous level of function. CNAs will usually be able to assist patients with these programs, which will be established at the hospital prior to discharge. Once an exercise program is enacted, it becomes the responsibility of the therapist to advance the patient to his or her maximum potential. The third qualifying service is speech therapy. A speech therapist evaluates and treats disorders that affect language and speech. They can also evaluate a patient's swallowing disability if necessary. This is particularly important when there is a possibility of aspiration. Another indication of swallowing difficulties is significant weight loss, which can be related to an inability to swallow or pocketing of food in the mouth. A home swallowing evaluation may need to be supplemented with an esophagram, which is completed in a hospital radiology department. This allows the speech therapist to identify any abnormalities in the swallowing process via the observation of barium's passage. Occupational therapy is used to establish and implement a therapeutic program that helps return the patient to the highest level of functioning through adaptive equipment used during activities of daily living. Occupational therapists work closely with other care providers, particularly home health aides, to adapt the patient's home environment to better fit their functional abilities. 
While an occupational therapist may not initiate services, they may continue to qualify services once care has been initiated by one of the three qualifying services. Medical social work is incorporated into a treatment plan when problems exist in home environments that impede the plan's completion and goals. An example would be a patient who has had repeated hospital admissions because they can't afford medications. A medical social worker identifies community resources that help patients and their families resolve this sort of problem. In addition, a medical social worker may work with the patient, family, and home health care staff to manage the patient's behavior or psychiatric problems such as confusion or dementia-related agitation that may be affecting the care provided. Home health aid services include personal care, maintaining a patient's health, and facilitating treatment. Housekeeping tasks may be included as part of the home health aid's assignment, but are not considered personal care. Personal care must be provided during every home health aid visit to qualify as a covered service. Personal care may include bathing, dressing, assistance with a home exercise program, application and removal of a TED hose, application and removal of an orthotic device, skin care to an incontinent patient, feeding a patient, and reminders to take medications. Please note that just verifying whether or not a patient has taken their medications is not considered personal care. Documentation must show that control of the medications has been completely removed from the patient in order for a medication reminder to qualify as personal care. Documentation must also detail the cognitive and physical limitations that make it unsafe for a patient to self-administer medication. A home health aide's scope of practice does not allow them to administer medications, but they may assist with medications by removing them from pre-filled medication boxes, handing water to the patient, and observing the patient take the medications. All of these specific tasks should be documented by the home health aide on each visit, particularly if medication administration is the only personal care qualifier. In summary, both medical social worker and home health aid visits are considered auxiliary services. In order for the home health aid and medical social worker visits to be covered, the patient must require skilled nursing, physical therapy, or speech therapy. An occupational therapist may qualify services of a home health aid once services have been initiated. You've now completed the basic Medicare home health benefit presentation. Please complete all tests in your packet and be sure to sign and date each test. Please notify your supervisor when you are finished.